find the mass of the solid object in the first octant between spheres x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 and x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 36, where the mass density is given by the function delta of x, y, z is equal to 2z. So let's quickly begin here by noting or recalling that the mass is computed by integrating this density function over the solid region D in R3. So we have the density function, but we need to find the region of integration, or our solid region D in space. So looking back up at our question, we have that this solid object is in the first octant. So let's recall that the first octant implies that all of these variables are greater than or equal to zero. So you can say that x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero, and z is greater than or equal to zero. Now we can also see that this solid region is between two spheres. So we have the difference of two spheres. Our first sphere is defined as x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to four or two squared. And our second sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 36, or 6 squared. So the fact that we're thinking about a solid region bounded between two spheres is a good indicator that spherical coordinates is going to be the most convenient method to integrate. So in order to see the spherical bounds on this solid region D, let's sketch a graph. So we've only drawn the first octant because this is one of our restrictions. Now looking at our two spheres, our first sphere has a radius of two. So we can say rho is equal to two. So drawing this region of the sphere in the first octant, so here is this one-eighth of our sphere, and again, we know that it has a radius of two units long. Beautiful! Now, our second sphere has a radius of six, so we can say that rho is equal to six. So, sketching this region on our graph, and this, of course, is not drawn to scale, but we're labeling to help ourselves visualize for accuracy. And again, we have a radius of six. Lovely. So just in sketching this graph and even just looking at these two spheres, we can see the rho bounds. So you wanna remember that rho is a variable that represents the radius of the sphere. So the smallest radius of this sphere is two, the largest radius is six. So we're able to conclude that therefore rho is greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 6. Lovely. So we have the rho bounds. The next thing that we want to think about is our phi bounds. And again, let's keep in mind that phi is the angle that fans out of the sphere from the positive z-axis. So looking at our sketch of this solid region, we can see here is our positive z-axis. So this is the ray where phi is equal to zero. And now from the positive z-axis, phi is the angle that fans out. Now it has to stop at the xy plane because we're this solid is restricted to the first octant. So our second ray for phi is right along the y-axis. And notice how this is creating a right angle with the xy plane. So we can say that this ray is represented by 90 degrees, or where pi is over 2. So we can officially state that phi is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi over 2. Beautiful! And last but not least, we want to think about the theta bounds. Now, again, keep in mind that theta is the same angle that we know and love from polar coordinates. So this is the angle that rotates in a counterclockwise direction from the positive x-axis in the xy plane. So if we look up at our sketch of our solid region, we can see that this region here is in the xy plane. 
This is where theta is going to be. So let's pull that region in the xy plane out and think about what it does to theta. So since the solid region is restricted to the first octant, the region in the xy plane is restricted to the first quadrant, and we can see right along the positive x-axis, this is the ray where theta is equal to zero. Now, from the x-axis, if we rotate in a counterclockwise direction, we stop right at the y-axis. So notice, we've created another right angle. So this vertical ray is where theta is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. So we can officially state that, therefore, theta is going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi over 2. So we have the bounds of this solid region, and now we are ready to convert the density function to spherical coordinates to match the bounds. So let's keep in mind that we were given the density function defined as delta of xyz is equal to 2z. So we now want to take this delta function and convert it to spherical coordinates. So you have delta of rho theta phi, and we are going to need to replace z with the corresponding spherical conversion formula. So this will become 2 multiplied by rho times cosine of phi. So now we have all of the pieces that we need, and we are ready to set up the triple integral to find the mass. So let's be sure to give ourselves plenty of room here. And now we can keep in mind that the mass of the object is defined as the triple integral over the solid region D of the density function D of x, y, z, dv. Now, we can plug in our conversion for our spherical triple integral. So this is going to be the integral. We'll have theta on the outside from 0 to pi over 2, the angle phi up for our middle integral from 0 to pi by 2, and our inner integral is with respect to rho, so from 2 to 6, and we converted our density function to 2 times rho times cosine of phi. And now we have to multiply by our spherical differential, rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. So we can simplify this a little bit further. We can say that this is the integral from 0 to pi by 2, the integral from 0 to pi by 2, the integral from 2 to 6 of 2 sine of phi cos of phi. And we've got rho times rho squared leaves us with rho cubed d rho d phi d theta. Now, looking at this integrand, we realize, hey, that's our double angle formula. So we can simplify this one step further and say that this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 2 to 6 of sine of 2 phi, rho cubed, d rho, d phi, d theta. Now, if you didn't recognize that double angle formula, have no fear. You could also evaluate the phi integral using a u substitution. But recognizing the double angle formula will provide us with quicker integration. So let's begin by evaluating the inner integral. So our inner integral is with respect to rho. So I'm going to keep this sine of 2 phi on the outside of the integral from 2 to 6 of rho cubed d rho. And so this integrates to sine of 2 phi multiplied by rho to the fourth over 4. And now we're ready to evaluate from 2 to 6. So I'm going to keep this sine of 2 phi divided by 4 on the outside. So plugging 6 in, we have 6 to the 4th, which gives us 1,296, minus 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So we have sine of 2 phi divided by 4. And this is now multiplied by 1,280. And we can simplify a little bit further. We know that 4 goes into 1,280 
320 times. So this leaves us with the simplified answer of 320 times sine of 2 phi. So we can plug this of inner integrals evaluation back into our triple integral and now evaluate the middle integral. So for the middle integral, I'm going to keep 320 on the outside of our phi integral, which is from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of 2 phi d phi. So when we integrate this, we are left with 320 multiplied by minus cosine of 2 phi over 2 and this is from 0 to pi over 2. As we can simplify a little further here, we know that 2 goes into 320 160 times. So this leaves us with minus 160 multiplied by cosine of 2 phi from 0 to pi over 2. So I'm going to keep this negative 160 out in front. And this is multiplied by cosine of pi minus cosine of 0. So we know that cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 0 is 1, so we end up with minus, one minus 160 multiplied by negative 2, which leaves us with positive 320. So we are now ready for our final integral. And so our outer integral is with respect to theta. So we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 320 d theta. A cute general antiderivative. This integrates to 320 times theta from 0 to pi by 2. And evaluating, we're left with 320 multiplied by pi over 2 for a beautiful final answer of 160 pi. So this is the mass of the object.